in a micro bit we will add this ultrasonic sensor and make a car reversing alarm imagine that this white paper is a car and the brown thing behind is another car or a wall when this white car reverses when it is close to that wall the alarm goes off and the warning light gets switched on the numbers you see on the micro bit is the distance between the car and the wall in centimeters when this distance is less than 5 centimeters the alarm goes off warning light comes on so let's first understand how does an ultrasonic sensor work in an ultrasonic sensor there is a transmitter and a receiver the transmitter emits a sound wave and if there is an object in front of it the sound wave hits the object bounces back and hits the receiver an ultrasonic sensor works exactly like the way radars work or the way bats na navigate what is called echolocation so from this ultrasonic sensor there is let's assume a wall in front of it so a sound wave starts and it hits the wall then it gets reflected back and reaches the receiver this is the receiver this is the transmitter to calculate the distance between the ultrasonic sensor and the obstacle you know the formula distance equals speed multiplied by time in this formula s here is the speed of sound and speed of sound is around 341 meters per second what we do is we take this formula and we divide it by 2 we have to divide it by 2 because the sound wave is first going towards the obstacle and then it is coming back using this formula the ultrasonic sensor is constantly able to figure out what is the distance between itself and the obstacle behind this ultrasonic sensor which is hcsr04 has got four pins the first pin vcc is the voltage pin the second pin is the trigger pin this is connected to the transmitter the third pin is called the echo pin this is connected to the receiver the ground pin we will connect to the negative terminal of our battery so the circuit we are going to make we will make it on a breadboard so let's first understand this breadboard so in this breadboard there are these uh, a red line and a blue line the plus and the minus so these strips on the reverse side all these dots are connected with a metallic strip so these metallic strips are connecting all the plus holes and all the minus holes and the same thing is valid on the other side all the plus holes are connected with a metallic strip and all the minus holes are also connected with a metallic strip on this breadboard from the power supply we connect the plus side to this plus one of these plus holes and then if you look at the horizontal holes which are these a b c d e so you can call them a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 so these a b c d holes on the reverse side are connected with metallic strips which are horizontal so the plus and minus were vertically connected these are horizontally connected so you may have you know uh, taken two wires and uh, joined them together but here we connect them by putting them into these holes so to use a breadboard we use jumper cables like this so uh, imagine that if this wire was coming from a dc motor and i put this in a1 hole and then i wanted to connect this to some other component so if i take another jumper cable and put it in e1 the a1 and e1 are connected because of the metallic strip behind the breadboard and likewise if this wire was coming from the positive side of the battery and this wire if i put it in e4 so now all the a1 a4 b4 c4 d4 they are also connected to the positive terminal of the battery so we use the breadboard to rather than uh, twisting the wires to join the wires more elegantly we use a web breadboard so here i am taking our ultrasonic sensor and i'm going to put it in the breadboard 
So in the ultrasonic sensor, we had these four pins, VCC, trigger, echo and ground. So I'm pushing these pins into the breadboard, uh, let's say on A12 and onwards, that is A12, 13, 14, 15. So we have put the ultrasonic sensor, then we take these wires. So right now, uh, what I have done is I have taken uh, this wire and so this wire on one side has this crocodile clip. Then uh, without insulating it right now, I have connected it on the other side with a push pin of a jumper cable. So I am taking this yellow wire and I am going to connect it to the echo pin on the ultrasonic sensor. And we had the echo pin connected to number A14 hole. So if I take this uh, yellow jumper cable and I put it on any of these 14 number holes, then they will be connected to the echo pin. And so our E14 is now connected with this yellow wire to the echo pin. Then I am taking a white wire and I am connecting it with the trigger pin of the ultrasonic sensor. Then I am following convention. Convention says that to connect the positive side of the battery, we use a red wire. So I am taking this red wire and I am connecting this red wire to the VCC pin and then I'm using a black uh, wire and convention says ground should be black. Of course, you can use any color wire. So I'm taking this black wire and I'm connecting it to the ground pin. So the ground pin is A15 and I'm connecting this black wire to E15. So now we have connected this ultrasonic sensor to the breadboard and we have fixed these four wires which join the four pins of the ultrasonic sensor. After this, I'm taking this uh, battery pack. This ultrasonic sensor works on voltages up to five volts. So in this battery pack, I am putting only three 1.5 volt cells so that we get a total of 4.5 volts. And then to complete the circuit in the battery pack, I'm just taking this wire and instead of putting the fourth cell, I am connecting the two ends so that our circuit is complete. So now we have a, a power supply. So now from this battery pack, we have got two wires coming out. And if we take this red wire coming from the positive terminal and on the breadboard. So now this entire uh, red strip, the holes on this strip are now connected to the positive side of the battery. And likewise, if I take this black wire coming from the negative side of our battery pack, this entire vertical negative rail, this blue rail, all the holes are now getting negative power supply from the battery. So I'm just going to change this cable uh, to which a crocodile uh, clip was attached. So instead of a crocodile clip, I'm putting another jumper cable and I'm attaching that on the one side to the VCC pin and on the other side to anywhere on the positive rail. And likewise, uh, instead of using this alligator wire that I had used earlier, I'm going to replace it with a wire which has jumper pins on both sides and I'm connecting the ground of the ultrasonic sensor to the negative rail. And you can use wires of any color, but I'm following convention and I'm using black for the ground and red for VCC. Remember that all my red wires are connected to the positive terminal of the battery and all black wires are connected to the ground. So then I'm taking this micro bit and I'm connecting yellow wire coming from the echo pin number two. These are GPIO pins or general purpose input output pins on the micro bit. I'm connecting it to number two pin and the white wire which was coming from the trigger pin of the ultrasonic sensor, I'm connecting it to pin number one of the micro bit. Next, we have to connect the ground pin of the micro bit to the uh, ground pin of our breadboard. So I'm taking this black cable and I am attaching the ground pin of the micro bit 
I am connecting it to the ground rail that we have created on the breadboard. So this completes the wiring of all the components. Next, we will write a program and test our car reversing alarm. I am on makecode.microbit.org website and here I am selecting create a new project and I am calling the new project ultrasonic sensor testing. So here we will go to settings on the top right and choose extensions and we will search for sonar extension. Then we will select and add this sonar extension to our programming blocks. So this programming block allows us to code for the pins on the uh, sensor, the trigger pin, the echo pin, and we can choose uh, which unit to use to measure the distance. I am choosing centimeter. Then to calculate the distance, I am going into variables and I am creating a new variable called distance. And then in the code we are writing, we are saying forever set the distance to and we are going to map the pins on our micro bit. The trigger pin of the ultrasonic sensor is on P1. So from this drop down, we are selecting that trigger is on P1 and the echo pin was on P2. So then our program says forever set the variable called distance to the values that you get from the trigger pin at P1 and echo pin at P2 and calculate the distance in centimeters. Then we are going to the basic programming block and pulling out show number and the number we want to see is the variable called distance. And right now this simulator is just showing an arbitrary number which tells us how the sensor value will be read. To read the variable called distance, I'm going to add a little pause. So I'm taking this pause programming block and selecting 200 milliseconds of pause. Then I'm going to connect my micro bit to, uh, to my laptop using this USB cable. And then I'm saying the program that we have written send it to the micro bit, download it to the micro bit. And now our program has got transferred to the micro bit. And right now the ultrasonic sensor is measuring the distance as 51 centimeters. So let's test our ultrasonic sensor. So I'm going to get this object and I'm going to bring it closer to the sensor. So the distance is changed and the ultrasonic sensor is reading that the object is two centimeters away. And then if I bring the object closer to the sensor, the reading changes to one centimeter. And then if I move the object, then the reading changes and it is now saying that the object is four centimeters away from the sensor, five centimeters away. And if I remove this object, then the next closest object, which you can't see, is 51 centimeters away from the sensor. So we took the ultrasonic sensor and we put it on the breadboard and then we made this very simple circuit. The wires may look complicated, but it's a very simple circuit. And then we wrote a small program and with the help of these two, we are able to use the ultrasonic sensor with the micro bit. So next on the breadboard, let's add a LED such that when the distance is less than five centimeters, the LED starts glowing. For this, we will go into the logic block and from this, we will get a if then else conditional statement. And then again from logic, we are getting this comparative block. And then from variables, we are saying that if the value of this variable called distance is less than five centimeters, the LED should light up. For this, we are going into advanced and pins. And from here, we are pulling these, we are pulling this digital right pin block and we have used P1 and P2. So for this, we will use P0. And we are saying here that if the variable called distance has a value of less than five, then pin zero change the value to one. All the GPIO pins can have two values, zero or one or low or high. What this means is that if we are saying that the, uh, uh, the value of the pin is zero, it means there is no current on, in, on that pin. And if the value is one, 
that means there is current on that pin so what our program is doing is we are saying that if the variable called distance has a value which is less than 5 then change the value of the pin 0 to 1 which means supply current to it and if the variable distance is more than 5 centimeters then don't give any current to P0 set it to 0. This means that when we connect the pin 0 of the micro bit to an LED if the distance is less than 5 that pin will get current and the LED will light up. Let's transfer this program to our micro bit. Then uh, we'll take one more cable and we are attaching it to pin 0 of our micro bit. And I am putting the other side of this jumper cable to F5. Then I am taking this LED. In the LED, the long leg is positive and the shorter leg is negative. So I am taking this LED and I am putting the shorter leg of the LED to the negative rail of our breadboard. And I am putting the long leg on the 5 number hole such that it is connected to P0. So our LED is now connected to our micro bit. And if we test our program again, so we again bring our object closer to the micro bit. And as soon as the distance becomes less than 5 cm, our LED lights up. When I move the object and now it is 7 cm away from the sensor, there is no current on uh, pin 0 and hence the LED is not lighting up. And as I bring the object closer to the sensor, as soon as the distance becomes less than 5, the LED lights up because pin 0 gets current. So the last step is that we want that the alarm should also sound. So for this, we are going into the music block. And here we are selecting the play melody block. And we are adding it uh, when the value of the distance variable is less than 5. Make pin 0 1 and play a melody. We can make any melody. So in our program, what we are saying is if the value of the variable called distance, which is based on how far the object is from the ultrasonic sensor, change the value of pin 0 to 1 and play this melody. So we are transferring this program to our micro bit. The micro bit that I have is version 1 and in this micro bit, there is no speaker. So I'm attaching an external speaker. So in this external speaker also we've got three pins, VCC, 3 volt, ground and a data pin or an input pin. So I'm attaching the voltage pin of the speaker to the positive rail of the breadboard. And I'm attaching the ground pin of the speaker to the negative rail of the breadboard. And now our speaker is on. And then the third pin from the speaker, the data pin, I'm connecting that to pin 0 of the micro bit. So let's test our system again. So right now the reading is 5 centimeters and our program says that the value should be less than 5. So I'm bringing the object a bit closer to the sensor. So as soon as the distance between the object and the ultrasonic sensor is less than 5, our alarm sounds and our warning light the LED, it lights up. So I hope you enjoyed this project where we made a car reversing alarm using a micro bit and a ultrasonic sensor and by writing a small code for it.